Welcome to a Tuesday edition of the Investor Guys podcast. Bill, how are you doing today? I am doing incredible, my friend. It's great to see you as always. Excited for everybody to be here with us. we got a great, great podcast planned today and hope you had a great weekend. I did have a good weekend. Uh, good to see you. Um, I know your your weekend wasn't all happiness, but I'm sure you got to see some family and, and yep. had some travel uh, tales to tell. <laughs> So uh, glad you're here. Glad you're back. Glad you're uh, able to do the show with us today. Uh, a lot of times we give you guys steps that if you follow these steps, if you do these things that we tell you, even how we tell you, your success is guaranteed. And we talk about all the time having a blueprint or having a map that shows you where to go, what to do. This is all part of that. You can put this map together. You can get this map from somebody else. Um, but if if you're going to do this, whatever you're going to do, your success is based upon the roadmap or the blueprint that you put together, or you have put together for you so that you can follow it. Now, an example of somebody putting a roadmap together for you would be like buying a franchise. Okay. They've done most of that, that blueprint work for you. They're handing it over to you. They're telling you if you follow this blueprint and work with us, then you're going to have this type of success. Uh, Bill and I have the same type of situation with our consulting clients. We give them a blueprint or a map to follow. And once they start down that path, and you're not going to go straight to the treasure. It's not going to take you five minutes to get to the treasure and dig it up. Okay. It's a journey that you have to take. But when you take that journey and you follow those steps, it will ultimately lead you to success. And the three steps we're going to take to talk about today. Okay. Again, guarantee your success. And we're going to spend a segment of the show on each one of these different steps and explain what they mean so that you can get a better grasp on it, so that you can put together your roadmap or have somebody help you with your roadmap. They are analysis, capitalization, and execution. So we're going to start with analysis because this is the first section of our show. Analysis could also be visualization. It could also be conceptualization, but it is where you start. If you have an idea, okay, if you have a property that's going to be good, if you have a strategy that you want to work, this is the analysis portion of the three steps that we just gave you. So give us some examples of visualization, uh, conceptualization, and analysis, Bill. Well, first of all, it's just having a plan, you know, saying this is now look, we're, we're in December. So hopefully you've been thinking about 2022 already and putting your plan together for 2022. But if you haven't been, now's the time to start doing that, not the week between Christmas and, and New Year's and certainly not the first week of the year. Start doing that now. So first of all, you can, a lot of different ways you can do it. One, you can decide how much money do I want to make? So pick a number. And then you can take that number and an easy way to set it out. Now, we're going to talk some numbers that are a little different than Kevin and I use, but uh, an easy way to do that is say, okay, what is the average retail price of the properties that I'm going to do? Let's say 300 grand. Okay, a very typical, lower than what we would do, but very typical profit or percentage of profit would be 20% of the retail price. So if I've got a $300,000 property and I'm going to make 20% profit, I'm going to make $60,000 on it. And I'm not going to do a deal that I'm not making at least that dollar amount on it. So then I can take that 60,000 as my average profit on a deal and now go back and say, all right, what is it I want to make? I, I want to make 360. Okay, well, if I'm making 60, that means I've got to do six deals next year to make 360 at a $60,000 profit margin. All right, now, now that I've got that, that means I got to do a deal every two months. How many offers do I have to make to find a deal that is a $60,000 profit. Well, maybe I have to make 10 offers, okay? So you can start, you work backwards. Say, so, okay, if I'm making 10 offers to find that one deal, and look, it may take you 20 offers to find that $60,000 deal. So if I've got to make 20 offers and I've got two months to do it in, I got to do 10 offers a month. 
And then that means I got to do two and a half offers a week. That's why we get on people so often. And, I'm, and if you're listening and you're not making the money you want to make in, in your business, then I'm getting on you right now. That's because we just backed off a $360,000 a year to where you're making two and a half offers, offers a week to find a deal in two months. So if you don't, if you're not uh, have the ability to make two and a half offers in a week, you're kidding yourself that one, either this is really how much money I want to make or two, that you really want to be in this business. You ought to be making five to 10 offers a, a week until you get your pipeline full and of uh, deals that you're working. Uh, and so, and don't fall into the trap of, gee, I got this offer accepted. I'm going to see it through before I make other offers. Don't do that. You kill your profitability when you do that. When you get that offer accepted, start making more offers. And understanding each of these three steps is going to help you because the other way to do this is instead of making all those multiple offers, we do one bigger deal. Okay. We find one bigger deal and we find two bigger deals or we find three bigger deals. So we're not making as many offers, but understanding how those next two steps play into that is very important. Now, our analysis goes further than that. So once we've established what our plan is going to be, we also need to do our numbers. We need to say, this is what my return is going to be on my investment. This is what my costs are going to be. And these need to be actual to the extent that you can, because nothing is, is, is chiseled in stone until it's actually done. But we have a good idea of what our costs are going to be based upon historically what costs have been. We have a good idea on what our profits are going to be based historically upon what our profits have been in the past. Now, these are numbers that we have that, again, historically tend to work the same way over and over and over. Are there other variables that could come into play? Yes. If we account for as many variables as possible, if we understand what each of those variables are, then we can, we can make sure that we're covered for them. But our analysis is essentially putting together a package that we could hand to somebody else. And they could look at this package and they could say, yes, this is a good deal. Yes, this is a good strategy. Yes, this is going to make you money. Yes, this will make me money if I capitalize you. And capitalization is going to be our next step. And we're going to talk about that as soon as we get back from this break. We'll see you in just a second. We're back, and today we are talking about analysis, capitalization, and execution. And this segment of the show, we're going to be talking about capitalization. Once you have your strategy in place, and your strategy is going to be everything we just analyzed, okay? The property or properties that you're going to be purchasing, um, how you're going to be purchasing, and the numbers that are going to come into play that show us whether or not this is a good deal or not. Now, this works for everything, okay? I have in the past found funding for movies. And I will have somebody come to me. They will have a package put together. This is a type of, of movie that we're trying to put together. This is what the cost is going to be. This is what our projection is at the box office based upon how we plan to release it, whether it's going to be a, a wide release or a narrow release or whatever it's going to be. Uh, and based upon what these types of films or types of films from this director or types of film that's had these types of actors in them before. This is the type of return that we expect. This, this, these three steps work for whatever business you are trying to accomplish. Uh, so we're focused on real estate, so we're going to be talking about real estate. But keep this in mind for no matter what you are trying to do. Right. A lot of you are, are doing real estate, but you are entrepreneurs. You do other things as well. These three steps apply to those other projects that you do. So let's talk about capitalization. Simply put, capitalization is how you're going to pay for this project that you just did the analysis on. It can be your own money. Ideally, it's somebody else's money. What are we going to be looking for for capitalization, Bill? Well, we've got multiple different things that we can do, to, to especially with real estate. Real estate is the most easily funded project you could possibly get involved with. So obviously, you got hard money. You can bring in a partner to, to use uh, their cash, their credit, or a combination thereof. So that's partnership money. Um, you can use your own cash or credit. Again, we suggest that at the very bottom. Uh, retirement accounts are a great way to go. 
yours or somebody else's to be able to do that. And I just love pure straight private money. You know, I just, uh, I think private money is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So when you have a property or you're buying a property and you've got a, a contract accepted, uh, here's the catch we as investors tend to get into. And Kevin and I have blown through this years ago. And one of the main things that we teach our investors is you start making offers day one and you start putting money together day one. You don't wait to put the money together until you have an offer. You don't wait to start making offers until you have the money. You start doing both of those things immediately because getting a deal is easier when you got the money and getting the money is easier when you got the deal. So it's the old chicken and egg. What are you doing? You're doing them both at the same time immediately. And people are looking for a great rate of return. So when we're able to offer them, uh, I do 12.5% on seconds. I do 10% on first. Uh, put them in a position where, ask them where they would want to be. Do you want a little bit higher rate or are you thinking about uh, you want to be in first position only? See where their comfort level is and then walk them through some numbers. Hey, and look, they can be, I, I had a guy ask me this this past week and I've been meaning to, to go through this. He said, well, uh, you know, there can only be one first on the property. Well, yes and no. There can truly, by definition, only be one first lien. But that one first lien may have multiple people on it. So if you're looking at two or three people that don't have the money to fund your deal solely, but they want to come in and be a part of your deal, but they all want to be first, you literally can put them on the first lien. They'd be on there together. And in the, the loan packaging, in the paperwork, in the lien itself, it would delineate this person has 28%. This person has 42%. This person has 31%, whatever it happens to be. And it will say, this is how much money that represented of the note funding, of the mortgage funding, and the percentage of ownership. Uh, and it is a great way to go so that you actually can have more than one person involved pulling a first lien. Right. And you can do that with an LLC, a series LLC, an LP, an LLP. You can do that with corporations. There's, you can do it with trust. You can do it with so many different things. Mm -hmm. Understanding your capitalization is, is going to be key to your success. So Bill was just talking about having offers in your pipeline so that you have a pipeline. You should do the same exact thing with your capitalization. You should have people lined up ready to do deals with you because they know that you're bringing good deals to the table. If you know you have that capitalization sitting there waiting for you, it's easy for you or easier for you to go out and line these deals up and do the analysis on these deals. And you know what types of deals you're going to be able to get capitalized because you have this capitalization in your pipeline already. Understanding how to put this capitalization together to where it's going to work best for you is also key. So many of us were like, you know what, if, if I just had the money, this is what keeps a lot of people from investing in real estate. They don't have the money themselves. So like, you know, I just, I can't afford to do it. Okay. And to that bill and I would say, you can't afford not to do it, but you know what? You can afford to do it. You just can't afford to do it with the money that's in your pocket. You can afford to do it with the money that's in somebody else's pocket or multiple different people's pockets, or there are institutions. Okay. And I'm not talking about just the bank. We're not talking about just hard money lenders. There are also lenders that focus on just investors. There are also hedge funds that invest in investors that invest in what investors purchase because they know they're going to get a return and it's secured by real estate. That's the most secure form of collateral that anybody's going to be able to get because it doesn't depreciate the same as, say, someone who's, who's guaranteeing loans on a car or somebody who is investing in stocks or bonds that could go up or down overnight, okay? Real estate is going to appreciate, and no matter what, if they have to take it as the security on the loan, they're not going to be upside down on it if they just hang on to it for a little bit of period. Maybe they're upside down that particular minute. They can wholesale it out, or they can hang on to it, and they'll be up on top of it, understanding where we're going to tap into that capitalization, understanding how that capitalization works for us is going to be key to our success. And again, what we said in the first segment is understanding how each of these steps work together is essential in making each one of these steps work. So back 
backtracking just a second to our analysis, okay? If we know we have capitalization for certain types of projects, we know it's easier to get capitalization for this, that, or the other because we've done it before. We can focus on those types of projects because we know we have in our capitalization pipeline people who are ready to fund our projects. Now, we've got one more step one more segment of the show, and that is execution. And again, understanding how our execution works with our capitalization and works with our analysis is going to be key. We'll be back in just a second. And we are back and today we were talking about analysis, capitalization and execution. This is the third segment of our show. So today, on this section of the show, we're gonna talk about execution. Um, once we have, our plan put in place, our analysis. Once we have our capitalization, it's funded. We have the money, we're ready to go. It's closed or ready to close. How do we execute that? Let's talk about having the money, but it hasn't closed, okay? How are we executing that, Bill? Well, you know, first thing we gotta do is stay focused on the outcome. And the greatest thing about execution is staying focused. So Tony Robbins has uh, one of my favorite sayings, which is, massive action, take massive action. And don't, there's a great book out there right now that, that's called Ready, Fire, Aim. Uh, and those things are all about moving forward and doing whatever it is. And for us as real estate investors, making the offers, getting the properties, whether we're doing rental, whether we're doing flips, whatever we're doing, whether we're doing um, self-storage, doesn't matter. But moving forward and taking the action, that's the execution. So we have to be able to get over ourselves from a standpoint of it doesn't matter how much you know about real estate. It doesn't matter how much access to capital that you have. If you don't execute, if you don't actually pull the trigger on a deal. And once you've done your numbers and you know the numbers fit the model, whichever model it is that you're following, you know the numbers fit the model because the numbers tell you that they do. And you don't have a half of leeway. You've got some, uh, usually a 10% contingency fee in there. So even if I miss something, I've got a category to be able to catch that up in. <clears throat> so once I've got some money that is interested in the deal, I've got to execute. Now, I would say start executing first. Start making the offer, start putting the money together and going out and taking the action. Make your mind up, commit to. We've talked about this a lot, setting your mind to. Not mindset, but setting your mind to. Set your mind to, I am going to make five offers this week. And then go out and start putting the properties together to make that offer. And look, an offer, what we say, Kevin and I talk about making an offer. We're talking about a contract that we've executed, signed off on, that we're presenting a seller, not talking to somebody about a possible property. That's just a lead. An offer is a written contract here. Now you've got something uh, in real estate. It doesn't exist if it's not in writing. So that's an offer. It's in writing. I want to start executing on how we move forward. And that is by pulling the trigger and taking the action. <laughs> Execution is essentially getting the job done. Now, we use the, the example of a, a map all the time. Let's talk about a treasure map. And you guys have seen the mystery of Oak Island. And there's another one that's going on in the Philippines. And uh, down here in Florida, we have people who still literally go treasure hunting for sunken you know, Spanish galleons that are somewhere off of the coast of Florida. So the analysis portion, do you put this in something that you might be a little better to understand for a treasure map. Analysis portion is the person who is the treasure hunter. They say, I believe that the ship sunk here. Or I believe the pirate buried his treasure here. Okay. That's the analysis portion. Now he can't afford to go and get the equipment and, and travel to that particular position without somebody backing him up. So he has to say, here's what I have. Here's the treasure map. And this, I'm pretty sure this is where the treasure is. And this is what backs that up. This is the facts that back that up that I have. So if you can help me get to this treasure, I will give you a portion of this treasure for capitalizing me. So he's, he's going to a money person, as we call it. That money person is going to fund his 
treasure dig. They're going to get him to the location he needs to get to. They're going to get him the shovels that he needs to start digging up. Execution. He's now boots on the ground. He's standing over top of where that X is on the map. Okay. Execution is where he and his helpers start digging in the dirt until they start hitting treasure, pirates, treasure, whatever it is. Okay. So using those three steps in a treasure map, that is exactly how it works with business. Our execution is our final steps, getting it done. Okay. From purchasing the property with the capital that we just raised to selling that property or putting tenants in it or whatever it is that is the ultimate output on our, our strategy. Understanding how each of these works is key. So let's jump back to analysis. Part of our analysis is going to be how we're going to capitalize this and how we're going to execute this. That has to be in our analysis. Okay, so understanding how our capitalization is going to work and understanding how our execution is going to work is key in putting together a working blueprint for our analysis. Now, we jump over to capitalization, understanding how we are going to get the facts for the analysis and understanding how we're going to execute this is going to be essential in our presentation to our money person who's going to give us the money. Okay. Execution is absolutely going to have to do with how much money we're paying back to our person who capitalized us in this deal. And what was our analysis on this? We can't change the map because we're going to get someplace else. Our analysis told us where we needed to be. Our execution has to follow through on that analysis that we put together in the first place. All these three steps work together. They're all cogent with each other. Okay, understanding how they work is is key, but we need to address each of them in order. One, two, three. What do you want to add, Bill? I see you nodding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you know, go ahead there. Yeah. The uh, execution is the capitalization and the analysis are meaningless if we don't do anything, if we don't pull the trigger. Uh, and so I, I love, uh, you know, I've, I've spent many years with Robert Allen, uh, working with Bob and Bob taught me a, a phrase that I live by every day, which is say yes to the opportunity, clean the mess up later. And so many real estate investors, especially new ones want to come in and, and have all the mess cleaned up first before they ever do anything. And what happens is they never end up doing anything. Yeah. Uh, so make sure that uh, you are executing. So take the analysis to heart, take the capitalization to foot, if you will, by meaning you're getting out and putting it together, take that to heart. Both are meaningless if you're not pulling the trigger, get out there and execute a contract. That's another way you can just look at it in the simplest of terms, execute the contract, get your name on it, get the offer in, and then you have an opportunity to start moving forward and building a business. Now, some of the things that we aren't addressing here specifically, okay, some people, they, they're starting out. They, you have no experience in any of these three items, okay, these three steps. Some people, you have some experience with one, but you maybe don't have it with the other two, or you have it with two and you don't have it with the other one. That is where people like Bill and I come in. OK, we can not only hold your hand, we can actually point you in the right direction. We can tell you what strategies you need. We can tell you how to run the numbers, which numbers are going to work for you, and which numbers aren't. We can point you towards people who, who do capitalization, people who we've used before, people who we've, we've referred other people to. And we can help you with the execution. This is what you have to do. This is how you do it. These are the steps you need to take, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't know Okay, whether it's Bill and I or somebody else, okay, make sure you get the information, make sure you have the knowledge to do each one of these steps, because the better you do each one of these steps, the better it is going to be for you in the end, the better your return is going to be, the lower your stress is going to be, the fewer chances of making a mistake you're going to have, make sure you have that knowledge, make sure you have that ability. Now, we could add in one more step here, and I know all of you already know what it is. Fourth step is repeat. Do this again. Once you've executed this, once you've cashed out, okay, reset this entire process and do it again with another property, another project, another whatever it is. 
reset. So fourth step goes without saying, repeat, repeat, repeat. Bill, anything to say in closing? Nope, that's, uh, that's got it covered. Back to their investing? Yeah, that's, that's got it covered. If they will follow those three steps, uh, they're going to have a, a great uh, propensity for success in this business. Guaranteed. If you master these three steps and you put them together, guaranteed success. It is that simple, yeah. that easy, done and done. Get on it. Tell us how it goes for you. Kevin at InvestorGuysPodcast.com. Bill at InvestorGuysPodcast.com. You can catch us at InvestorGuysPodcast.com all the time. If you happen to be listening to us, you can catch our actual video so you can see our charming faces uh, at InvestorGuysPodcast.com. Thanks for joining us. Happy investing. And we will see you back here on Thursday. Bill, have a see great you everybody. day. everybody. You too, brother.